Okay, so you've heard about us on the internet, you've been on the website, you've seen the products and you think that's fantastic. What a brilliant idea. A modern PC and a retro shell, but there's one thing that's putting you off and that is you've never built a PC before. You don't know how to install the motherboards, the hard drives, the CPUs, the RAM. Sure, you can use Windows and install apps, but you've never done the hardware side of it before. Well, that's what this video is about. We're going to show you how easy it is to install these components. It's not like it used to be. It's just plug and play. It's very simple and very quick. And we're going to introduce you to the world of retro PC building. This is our retro PC case. It just oozes 80s nostalgia, it's fantastic and some of you will recognise this from 2011 when a company called Commodore USA brought this into being. They even called this a Commodore 64X but unfortunately we're not allowed to call it that anymore so we're just calling it My Retro Computer My 64. It's got a mechanical keyboard, a very high quality mechanical keyboard. Can you hear those tactile clicks? Absolutely fantastic. We've got a change since Commodore USA brought this out. Instead of a card reader on the end, we've got a metal plate with some holes for ventilation and a hole for the Piku power supply. And on this end, when this was a bare bones case uh, from the days of Commodore USA, uh, that was just an empty, that was just a hole ready for you to buy your own optical drive and install it. But we've gone one step further than that. We've installed a hard drive cradle that sneakily looks like an optical drive from the outside. But really it's, a hard, it's ready to install a hard drive, a two and a half inch hard drive into it. And again it's plug and play, you just clip it into place. It's very easy, very quick. And there's one more thing. And that is something that is brand new, never been done before. This is a My Retro Computer, My Vic 20. Brand new, very excited about this. So there's only really two changes, and that is orange function keys and the case is white. Other than that, it's exactly the same case as the My64. It's just a VIC-20, it's fantastic. So I thought it would be a fantastic idea today, a brilliant idea today, to do this video with this case as opposed to the My64, because in the days of Commodore USA, there's been tutorials out there where people have showed you how to install motherboards on that system. So I thought it would be really nice today to do it on the VIC-20 or the My VIC-20. So let's crack on, let's step into the world of retro PC building. Right, so this is the list of tools and parts that you need for this build. So obviously you're going to need to purchase the case, a My64 or a My VIC-20. The other components required for this build is an ASRock J105 ITX and this is a mini ITX embedded motherboard. Embedded means that it already has the CPU and the heatsink as part of the board which saves a lot of time and it's an ideal build for uh, a novice that's never done it before. We need an 8GB stick of DDR4266 DIMM RAM uh, so the RAM has to be compatible with the board above. We need a Pico PSU 90 watt uh, power supply plug. Now this might seem like gobbledygook to you, but I've worded it so that what you see on the screen is exactly what you've got to ask for. So this is what powers the um, motherboard. We need an 80 watt AC universal adapter. Well, this is a laptop brick, so it's got to be the correct adapter for the PQ PSU, and that is what's listed there. We need a mini SATA power data cable for the slimline optical drive. Now, it's got to be a slimline data cable. And we need a hard drive. A Kingston 240 gigabyte hard drive is what I'm using for this, a solid state. But as long as it's a two and a half inch hard drive, it could be any size, so all the way up to one terabyte, it's whatever you want to put in it, whatever suits your build and your budget. This is all available from miniitx.com. They're very helpful. They helped us with this build and helped us select the items that we were going to put in it. Tools required. We need an ESD wrist strap. So this is an anti-static discharge strap. We also need some side cut pliers or scissors. 
and all that's for is cutting cable ties once we zip them up and we need a Phillips screwdriver to uh, undo and do up screws so you can see our tools we've got here we've got our Phillips screwdriver we've got some side snips and we've got our very important anti-static wrist strap so if we just move these out of the way uh, I'll show you the components so we've got our 8 gig memory stick we've got a 250 gig Samson solid state hard drive here and we've got our Piku Power, which is a 90 watt Piku Power supply. And we've got our motherboard. So the first thing we're going to do is open this box up. And there's something that's really important that we must do. And that is earth ourselves to the motherboard so we can't do any damage. Think of it like this, you, you carry around a static charge inside you where you're walking on carpets and things like that, getting inside cars and out of cars. If you earth out onto one of these boards, um, like you would if sometimes if you touch a door handle, things like that, it will be the equivalent to the board of you being struck by lightning. So that is how dangerous it is to the boards it wouldn't do any damage to you but it could ruin the cpu and all the sensitive uh, circuitry that's within that board so the first thing we're going to do is put the strap on and on the end of this we have a crocodile clamp and we've got to clamp that to the motherboard So obviously when we're taking the motherboard out we've got to touch it at some point without the strap attached so we want to try and hold it by one of the rear IO outputs or the, the very edge of the motherboard. Do not hold it in the middle because you could cause damage to it. So there's the motherboard. I'm, I can hold it by the heat sink and that's okay and we've got to find somewhere for this strap to go. So I'm just going to clip it on to one of these little screw connectors on the uh, video output. Okay, so that's that. So now we can move this out the way. I'm going to use this piece of foam because before we install this into the case, I want to get the RAM and install the RAM. Remember me saying about how easy it is to install stuff now, plug and play. Well, this is the RAM, and if you can see, it's got a slit, but the slit is offset. And that is to stop you from putting the RAM in round the wrong way. So what we're going to do is line the slits up with the little spade that's on the DIN rail. And what we're going to do is slide it down. It slides in a down motion so we're lining that up so it can't be wrong and we're going to push this down until the two side clips lift up and lock it into position and you'll hear the clicking noise so it you can do this in a motion where you're pushing it in from one out from one side at a time and and just it just it maneuvers it into place we've pushed down the two clips have come up and locked it into place so as it stands now we've got the motherboard with an embedded CPU and heatsink, so and the mother and the, the 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 RAM. So in a sense, this is finished. This is your PC. This is it. It's done. The only thing it's missing now is its hard drive and the cables to connect it together. There's one more thing thinking of it that we can do, and that is we can put the Piku power supply in. We can do that before we put it in the case. So this is a, a, a 90 watt one and it again is plug and play. It's got a clip and as you push it down the clip goes over a little ledge and it clips in place. Again it only goes in one way and we're going to do it for we're going to line it up with the block and we're going to put it in at a slight angle and then we're just going to push it down until you hear the click. And once it's clicked in, you can tell because the yellow edge is right up against the black socket. So we know that's in. So as it stands now, it's got its power to it. 
and it's got everything connected to it so all it's missing for a complete PC now is the wires connecting the motherboard to the hard drive so our very next job now is to install this into the case how easy was that okay so the motherboards next to me just out of shot I'm still strapped up to it but I've taken the liberty of undoing the six screws on the underside of the case so that we can start separating the two sort of ends of the case so the top and the bottom okay I've also put this over here for the moment I've also got green tape on my bench um, so that I know that the case is in shot so you can see what I'm doing so what we've got here uh, is um, a bag of cable ties and panel mounts uh, so that oh, sorry not panel mounts cable tie mounts and this is to aid with uh, cable management at a later point where we're routing the cables we've also got a bag of motherboard screws which we're just about to use now this card is just instructions on how to fit the hard drive but I'm going to do that now so you'll be able to see that anyway let's get rid of the silicon so the first thing before I put the motherboard in we're going to put the hard drive in now exactly the same way as the other parts it only goes in one way so we've got the connections here and we just line them up if it's upside down they won't line up it only goes one way and what we do is we connect it we, we we line it up and we lift this end up but only a little bit and then we push it in this direction wobbling it a little bit until it slots in and then we just let gravity do its job and it just sits down like that that's the hard drive fitted next job is the motherboard so what we're going to do is we're going to get now this is going to be tricky because we've got a take off the crocodile clamp so I'm holding it from the heat sink I'm going to remove the crocodile clamp for a moment because we have to fit the IO shield on so we'll line that up making sure it lines up good and then we're going to set this down and we're going to slot it there's a slot down there on this edge we're going to make sure that the IO shield is slotting down there to the base and then once it's on the base we can reconnect the crocodile clamp I have to lean over just to put that back on so the next job is the uh, the uh, screws so we'll open this bag up that says on it motherboard and card reader screws but there's no card reader screws in it because they're in use holding this metal plate on so what I'm going to do is put these screws in but I'm not going to tighten them up I'm just going to put them in a couple of turns that's all if I can actually get them in okay. and the reason why we only put them in a couple of turns is because if we do one screw up fully tight we, not, we might not be able to get the other screws in there, the holes might line, line up so we're putting them in one at a time and we're not tightening them, tightening them right up we're leaving them loose and then what I'm going to do is push the motherboard in this direction so it's tight up against the IO shield you'll probably be able to see the movement, can you see that movement? I'm going to push it up so it's tight and then we're going to pinch these up so these screws as soon as you feel it binding onto the motherboard it's just a little pinch you don't need any more than a pinch you don't want to damage the motherboard in any way and it's very it's very easy to tighten these up too much and damage the motherboard these motherboards are very sensitive okay the next thing we're going to do is one of these cables is not needed and it's this one with this square block on it so we're going to take that cable out because we don't need it and it's keeping the system nice and tidy the next thing we're going to do is undo this metal plate with the two screws and the reason we're undoing it is so that we can route the power 
between these two underneath this post so it will mean that the power will be clipped in to a nice position really so let's route these round now I've got a confession to make I have built this already to make sure it worked and it did work so we've obviously carried on to the to the finished product now the actual uh, if you can see this we've got a thread that comes with the first thing you put on is the washer and then you put the thumb screw on we're not going to tighten this up either and it, it screws on clockwise we're not going to do it up fully tight we're going to leave it slack so that when we put this in we can still move it around so the metal plates back on before we do the screws up make sure that the wire goes underneath the metal plate I'm just going to do the screws up. I appreciate I'm obscuring your view a little bit but uh, I'm just doing these two screws up okay so that's nice and neat and it's all about keeping the cables out of mischief and getting them so they look nice and neat and that's what they do so that cable that's the power cable and that looks nice and neat so now we're just going to pinch this up clockwise and just finger tight is good enough okay so to recap the motherboards installed the motherboards finished the only thing we need to install now is we might as well do the power sorry the fat the, uh, the chassis fan so the chassis fan over on this end here of the motherboard you've got CHA underscore fan one so that's chassis fan one it's got three prongs on it this has got three sockets it only goes around one way you've got two lips one there and one there and we're just gonna push them in and what we do is now this is fitted and again you might need to just maneuver this into a different position to for cable management so the so the wires aren't in the way of anything that's in a nice position like that okay so that's fitted the next thing is to fit the slimline optical drive wires again these only go one way you'll just have to figure out one side's bigger than the other and you've just got to line them up around the right way so the sizes correspond slit that it slot that in that was so simple straight in there and we're going to tuck this wire underneath the hard drive cradle and then we're going to plug it in we've got four SATA sockets and we're just going to plug it in it doesn't matter which one but we're going to plug it into that one there and then the last piece of the puzzle is the Molex power um, all we're going to do here is this is the power socket from the optical drive or the hard drive cradle and this is the power coming from the Piku power supply we're just going to line the wires up so making sure that red goes into red but to be fair it doesn't really matter because you can't put it in the other way anyway and we're just going to line these up it's nice to come in at an angle again um, and that and just push push it together plug it together that's finished so that's another job done now we need to come into the cable management side of things and what I mean by that is we need to get some cable ties out and some cable tie mounts we're going to peel off the yellow tape to expose the sticky part if I can and a really good idea is to to actually put in the cable tie before you stick it because once you've stuck this in place <laughs> you can't get the cable tie in so we're going to put the um, mount here between these two vents so it's sometimes a little tricky to do this but let's try our best try and keep it nice and square and 
so it looks quite good. You don't want it all skew with. Right, I might need to just lift that up with a screwdriver to get the end. Okay, so we've got that. So what we're going to do is feed these wires. We want to clamp these wires down. I want to make sure all the wires are in a nice position and out the way. Look, you can see that they're nice and neat. And then I'm just going to clamp this down. And do this cable tie up, zip it up, feed it in, and you can you'll hear the zipping noise. Hear that? Nice and tight. And then we use the side snips just to snip that off. And how easy was that? So we're pretty much there. We're ready to fit the top half of the case. Okay, I've taken the liberty to move that case out of the way. Um, uh, sort of the bottom and, and bring the top into view. There's a couple of things we need to do to this to prep it ready to fit it to the bottom. So the first thing we're going to do is undo this and, and get these wires out. These There's four wires here and unless we do something about them they're going to be floating around inside the case getting in the way of every, everything. So what we're going to do, I'll tell you what I will do and that's disconnect the earth strap for a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of cable ties. So we've got a bend here, a bend there and a bend there. So I think what we'll do is we'll leave the middle bend but we'll put a cable tie on this one and that one just to try and stop it from to basically join the wires together and make them as one. Just to keep it nice and neat inside the case. That's what it's all about. Keeping it, they, we call it cable management, and it's keeping the cables tidy within a case. To be fair, it doesn't really matter about this build because it's a very simple build, it's as simple as you can get. When you get to the, the build, the really complicated builds where you've, where you've got a big tower system, these wires can get in the way, especially when you've got moving parts, fans spinning around, large fans. So that's why we like to root cables out of the way of everything. So now what I want to do is use another one of these cable tie mounts, fit the cable tie through it sideways and we're going to stick the cable tie on here between these two vents. So we've got three vents on the uh, top half of the case and we don't want to obscure these vents we need as much ventilation through this case as possible so the best place to fit this would be over the center sure it's going to obscure it a little bit but nowhere near as much if, as if we put it over the whole thing we're trying to keep it square nice and neat like that and then what we're going to do is uh, it would help if I had that cable around the right way to be fair I put the cable around the wrong way uh, now I'm going to have trouble trying to get this cable to go through. You can see what I mean about always put the cables in before you stick the mount on because it's so difficult to fit them in afterwards. But there you go, I've done it anyway. It would help if I actually put the cable tie in around the right way though. So let's have another go. Yeah, got it that way. Got it that time. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to route these cables through here. So I'm going to close this cable up. So I'm going to fold it over on itself because there's plent plenty of cable there for, for routing where it's got to go. And we're going to make sure that the this cable, which is the USB header cable, which is the keyboard cable, we're making sure that's in with it. So all three cables, sorry, all two cables, but one's folded over on itself, is going through this cable tie. And it's just going to keep the cables nice and tidy and easy to fit uh, the, the this side of things. I just want to make sure, yeah, that's fine. Right, so what we're going to do now is snip this cable tie off. And now 
we have to put our strap back on because we're working back with the motherboard. Okay, so we're going to come across. I'm skewing your view again, sorry. I'm just going to put that crocodile clamp back on. So we're clamped on, everything's safe. The top half of the case is here, so I'm going to put it in this position so I can line up the plugs. So the first plug we're looking for is the USB. Now with these oh, cases you get uh, one of these and one of these and they're quite important because they help you work out where these wires go because these two wires so the USB header wire is pretty much the only wire you can put in round the wrong way so on the um, information leaflet you'll see that it's got four uh, sorry five holes in it but there's only four cables going in and one of the holes is empty and we call it the no pin position so what you've got to do is find the USB 2 connection which is here we're going to show you a close-up picture of this in a minute it's got five pin positions but one pins missing so we need to make sure that the way it's plugged in is the pin that's missing is where the wires missing on this because uh, otherwise you could if you put it around the wrong way you could damage the keyboard so we can plug that in but don't worry, I'm going to show you a close-up picture of that plugged in. So that's the keyboard connected. So the next thing we're going to connect is the power switch. This is the power switch. Again, I'm going to show you a close-up. When you're doing this, obviously you're going to be using hopefully the same configuration. So everything's in the same place different motherboards the uh, pin positions can be they could be here over there so many different places so it's always best if you can't find them to look in your manual motherboard manual and it will show you exactly where they are the good thing about uh, the motherboard manual is it's going to show you the plus and minus and then our leaflet shows you the plus and minus positions on the pins so you should be able to line it up on the wire so I'm just going to plug these in because I know which way around they go and we will show you a close-up so don't worry about uh, not being able to see what I'm doing here you'll see a close-up of these pins plugged in which is the main idea okay so we've got both wires plugged in we want to slot the case in now but we want to make sure that the wires are out of the way of everything which they are and I'm slowly going to close this down now I can disconnect the crocodile clamp because we're finished inside the case and this is we're, we're literally finishing the case off I take this strap off I just need to maneuver that over so that's the case ready to screw up so we're going to finish this off now so everything's installed inside all we've got left to do now is just show you it booting up into the windows installer and then we're done and that's it okay so what we've done is we've maneuvered it into position next to the monitor we've plugged in a power brick laptop power supply as listed We've attached the monitor, I've plugged in a USB mouse and I've also taken the liberty of plugging in a flash drive with the Windows 10 installer on it. So we're going to turn on the brick and we're going to press this button here which is the power button and hopefully what I think is going to happen, what I hope is going to happen is this is going to detect the Windows installer and boot into the Windows installer that's located on the flash drive. So this is it. I wanted to keep the video as, as neat and as fast as I could to show you how easy it is to build one of these retro PCs. This admittedly is a basic system. It's got 
embedded CPU, so uh, you, we didn't have to fit a CPU, we didn't have to fit a heatsink, we didn't have to fit a fan. There you go, it's booted into Windows Installer. Um, it was already embedded onto the board. That's that's why we took we chose that board because it was very simple and it's very easy for the novices, people that's never done this before, to step into the world of building one of these systems. Our next video will be the i7 or i5, something like that. We're going to try um, and and install one of those systems, and then we're even looking at a Ryzen system with uh, Vega 11 graphics. This retro computer hasn't got an intense graphics card. It's got a dedicated graphics on the on the, um, uh, the CPU and on the on the motherboard, but it, it can't play graphics intense games. It can play most games and uh, it can do stuff in the web and word processing and pretty much anything that you want to do in your house, apart from graphic intense processing. So we're talking top games and we're talking um, uh, rendering and things like that this won't be able to do it. it isn't powerful enough the other systems that we're talking about may very well be able to do that but this one is just a basic system and I really hope you enjoyed the video please um, subscribe and click the um, subscribe button uh, turn notifications on so when we bring out the next videos, uh, you will be up. To, you 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 know you will know about it, and you can watch these new videos that we're bringing out. Um, I'm hoping we're going to bring them out. You know, within the next month, you, there should be another video. What we've got to do is test the systems first. I don't want to do a video, and then there's problems. So if I do a video like this one and put it out there, it's because this works, and there's no problems with it. It doesn't overheat. So that is what we've done. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'm signing off, but thank you very much for watching. Bye.